guys you're welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good i really genuinely thought that they would kill me and uh, any act of kindness that they showed towards me i saw that as a trick about six days into um, my captivity i was asked if i wanted to embrace islam i rather foolishly uh, believed george bush and tony blair i mean they wouldn't lie would they <laughs> Sister Yvonne, uh, tell me how the, your journey to Islam started. Well, it started in the unlikely surroundings of a Taliban prison in Afghanistan. You were imprisoned? Yes, I was, um, I was held uh, for 11 days by the most evil, brutal regime in the world, according to George Bush and Tony Blair. It was a terrifying experience that I didn't think that I would survive. But throughout the ordeal, I was treated with a courtesy and respect that uh, I hadn't expected. But well, how did you end up there? Well, I had entered the country illegally without a passport and visa. Um, it was the build up to the war. And I wanted to see what life was like for ordinary Afghan people. And so um, I couldn't get a visa. They didn't want Westerners into the country. They were on the verge of war. So I sneaked in. I was determined to, to get in. And who, who were you working for at the time? I was the chief reporter of the Sunday Express newspaper in London. And... I just wanted to find out the, you know, what, what life was like for real, ordinary Afghan people. And then they caught you and held you? After two days, um, I was uh, rumbled as I headed back. Um, I was done for by a donkey <laughs> and, and uh, fell off this donkey and, and, and was um, arrested. Now, what intrigued you about uh, the Taliban? Um, I watched them for 11 days and I saw that their religion was more than just something that uh, was carried out on a Friday. It was part of their life. It was the way they ate, the way they slept the way they dressed, the way they acted, everything had an Islamic context. In fact, with the Taliban, it was quite clearly a way of life. And, um, and this made me very interested in how it worked. And about six days into um, my captivity, I was asked if I wanted to embrace Islam. They asked you? Yes, they invited me and uh, I just said that I couldn't make such a life-changing decision while I was in prison, but I said, if you let me go, I promise I will read your holy book and, and any supporting literature. And against all the odds, uh, they let me go a few days later while they still held on to other Westerners. I think uh, it could have been because I had acted like the prisoner from hell. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want um, to, well, I, I, I really genuinely thought that they would kill me. And uh, any act of kindness that they showed towards me, I saw that as a trick. Mm. Um, you didn't trust them? I didn't trust them. Uh, I rather foolishly uh, believed George Bush and Tony Blair. I mean, they wouldn't lie, would they? So, <laughs> uh, so I railed against my captors. I spat at them. I swore at them. I threw things at them. I just wanted to accelerate my demise because I didn't want um, this ordeal to go on for years, to be tortured or abused. And their response to my very bad behaviour um, was surprise. 
And they kept saying, why are you acting like this? You were our guest. And I'm thinking, why are they acting like this? They're supposed to be <laughs> brutal and evil. But as I say, it, it, while they held on to other Westerners, they did release me on humanitarian grounds. And when I returned to London, I thought I, I made a promise and um, I'll keep my word. But I also needed to know about Islam because I was interested in matters uh, connected with the Middle East and Asia. And I realised just by simple observation of the Taliban that Islam was not something that you picked up and put down again. It was a way of life. Mm. And I thought, how can I write with any authority or understanding of the Muslim world unless I know more about this faith. Prior to your uh, experience with the Taliban, did you have any exposure uh, um, about Islam? Did you meet Muslims before? I mean, did you, what, what sort of knowledge did you have about Islam? Um, what I knew about Islam, you could probably write on the back of a postage stamp. And, and all of that was wrong anyway. And I, I began to think about this. I mean, I was brought up in the northeast of England in a white working class community. Uh, nothing as exotic as Islam crossed my horizon at all. So I thought, well, where have I picked up this idea that Islam is violent, brutalizes and oppresses women? And I could trace it back to television, to cartoons, to this slow, subliminal, drip, drip, drip narrative that um, anything from the East uh, is violent, aggressive and oppressive. And I began to realise that um, I hadn't picked up a book about Islam or the Muslim world, but I had been uh, subliminally brainwashed to think that this is an area that is, is violent and oppressive. So after you came back from Afghanistan, you started fulfilling the promise you made. Mm -hmm. Uh, you started reading books about Islam or started reading the Quran or what? I began reading the Quran and I was given a, an English translation by A. Yasaf Ali, which also had um, additional footnotes mm. and it had an index in the back. So being a lifelong promoter of women's rights, I went straight to the back to find the chapter on how to abuse women, how to prevent education, how to force marriage. Of course, I couldn't find anything. Um, and, and so I started reading it and was just amazed on so many different levels because um, the Quran uh, makes it crystal clear that women are equal in spirituality, worth and education. And it is totally gender balanced. It was incredible uh, reading it. So I then began reading supporting literature on women's rights in Islam. And uh, even something like the marriage ceremony, uh, that, that uh, I, I was told is called the nikah. Um, women can write out their contract. It's treated like a business arrangement. You write out your hopes, fears, expectations. It, and I'm thinking, well, this is like the prenuptial agreement that all the Hollywood stars exactly. um, <laughs> have drawn up. Uh, so many different things. And I, I was just totally amazed. So this drew me in closer and what started out as a fulfillment of a promise, a, an academic exercise, very soon turned into a spiritual journey. I already had a core belief in God. I was a practicing Christian. I went to church maybe twice a month, which in secular Britain is bordering on fanaticism. 
Um, so I had that belief in God and reading the Quran was so easy because all of the prophets, all of uh, the messengers, uh, they were all in there with the exception of uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him. And I started then reading about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and he was an amazing character, uh, uh, the most perfect human that's probably ever walked the earth mm. and just an amazing role model for people to follow. And then I started to begin to understand why Muslims held him in such reverence and why they got angry and upset if um, he was ridiculed or his image was portrayed. And, and so I started reading more about, um, about him as well. And, uh, so that was really a process. How long did it take? Uh, about two years mm. and I just thought that um, I'm still believing in the same God but this is making just a little more sense than Christianity and I spoke to various scholars and theologians from the Christian faith as I was moving over and sp spoke to a lot of Islamic scholars because of my profile through the Taliban experience. Um, everybody was willing to help me. So I had access to some of the finest minds in the Islamic world. But the final realization actually came through speaking to an ordinary brother when he said, why aren't you, why haven't you converted yet? You know, you're, you're so close. And I said, well, I'm still stuck on the Holy Trinity, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. And he said, look, um, what relation was John the Baptist to Jesus and I said well they were cousins and he said so when John the Baptist prays to God he would say uncle God and I said no <laughs> I said that's ridiculous he said exactly he said and that is, that is how ridiculous the, the 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 trinity is because you cannot mix human with God mm. and and he said you know that that, that, very that's basic, very basic. So basic, so easy to, to understand. And I thought about it more. And, um, and then another friend who uh, was a Christian, uh, I was having this discussion with him and his friend who was an atheist chipped in and he said, look, if you have three messages three post-its stuck on your computer, um, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, which post-it are you going to take notice of? And I said, well, the most recent, he said, well, that's Islam. And he said, you know, I don't know why you're agonizing over this. <laughs> and, and he solved it, the problem for you. Yes. Mm. And it, it's uh, sometimes the answers to life are so simple. Mm the stariness in the face. And so I then um, took my Shahada. That was uh, on June the 30th, 2003. And um, the next day I was moving to Qatar to work for Al Jazeera. And I, um, I arrived in Qatar as a Muslim and it was just around the time, uh, you know, Ramadan was a few months away to secularists and atheists. You know, I would say if you don't understand belief, go to Idlib. 
and you will see God in, is, is everywhere. Why did so many people turn out? Because there hadn't been a boat arriving in mm. Gaza for more than 40 years. This was incredible. And we both started laughing and, at, at the irony that we were going to be sent to paradise by the Israelis, <laughs> you know. And, and so we were laughing and saying, well, bring it on. Wow, what an interesting story, guys. When it comes to religion, I don't like to be against anybody. You are free to be in any religion that you want to be in. The main thing is that we are all serving God. And I love the fact that I actually took that decision to convert. And ever since then, life changed. But this was really touching and really nice to listen to. And wow, interesting. Very touching. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like, share, and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Stay blessed.